Hi, I'm Paul Carson, and this is our introduction to Blackboard 9. Uh, we're the instructional design team for faculty computing support, and we're just going to show you a very few things of how to get started with Blackboard 9. The first segment is building your course, and we're going to look at a couple different things. The basics, managing your course, and some really cool new features that you like. And I'm not going to read the list of the basics. We'll go over them as we get to them, but we'll start in one second. We're actually going to move into Blackboard. All right, this is the, the Blackboard interface, and this is fairly like what you've been used to. Uh, the list of my courses is still here, and we can go into a course. This is the new entry page. The most important thing for you to learn about the new Blackboard is that the control panel isn't the way it used to be. You used to click control panel and go to a separate page in the back. Now you have this edit mode on off. This is like the display, edit view, display view that you had in the content sections before. When the edit mode is on, I don't know if you can see it in this recording, but there are gray hash marks showing that this is the edit mode. When I turn the edit mode off, the gray hash marks are gone, and this is what the students would see. Blackboard remembers that for you. If you set it to off, it's going to stay off till you change it. Blackboard knows what your intentions were the last time you were here. So I can turn the edit mode back on, and now I have to step around so you can see this. While the edit mode is on, you rearrange your course by dragging things around. If you want to change a link, if you want to move a link down, you just just take a hold of it and drag it down. Right. And once you once you turn the edit mode back off, that's what the students are going to see. You just rearrange the order of the links. And we'll show you other places through the system where that same dragability is a feature. It's how you reorder the links now. The edit mode is an instructor feature. Right, it's strictly an instructor feature. Students don't have that. So although you can toggle back and forth between edit mode on and off, the students don't have that option. If you leave it, if you leave it in the edit mode on, the students are never going to see that. Managing your files in the new system is different. Right, there's actually a separate file space where you store files. One of the things you have to remember is, is the file naming convention that we've used for years, and this is important. When you name files that you're going to use in Blackboard, when you name them on your computer, name them with letters, numbers, and the underscore. No spaces and no symbols. Letters, numbers, and the underscore are always safe. Sometimes you'll get away with, with breaking those rules, but when you're really serious about it, all of a sudden the file won't work, and the reason is often that it's misnamed. And we'll show you now, we'll switch to Blackboard, and show you this new system of uploading files. This is the new file system, and this is new. This was not part of, of the earlier versions of Blackboard. Under this control panel section in the bottom left-hand corner is files, and if you click that, and then click your course ID, right, it brings up this file uploader. So when you want to upload files, you click Upload Files, and it launches this space onto which you can drag and drop files. So then you can browse on your computer to the F drive. And I have a PowerPoints folder. And then I can drag files from here into this space. If you need to upload three or four files at once or more, or the entire folder, you can drag them into the space. And submit. And these are uploading to Blackboard. Right. In the past, we had to do one file at a time. This is batch files. Now, keep something in mind with this. You just uploaded these to the file space. Your students still can't see them. Right, you've stored them, and, I'll, and that's the next thing I'll show you, is now that you've got these files up here, how do you publish them so your students have access to them? One of the features of this new Blackboard is if you have a content folder that has nothing in it, the students can't see it. 
So if I have this edit mode off, this is the student view over here. There's no content folder because there's no content yet. This is a brand new empty course. If I turn the edit mode back on, right, now I have a content folder with this little indicator that there's nothing in the folder. Now this is different. When you're going to build content, there's a variety of stuff you can add. And I suspect you can't read all of that right now. Uh, we'll do a detailed lesson on content, but for now I want to add an item. And this is familiar to you. You're still going to add a name. Right? We can type PowerPoint up in here. And if I needed to, I could add text. For this I don't. This is different, right? In the earlier version, you would hit Browse My Computer, search for one single file, and upload it. Now you can go to Browse Course. And these are those files that you've uploaded to your file storage space, right? And, and perhaps batch uploaded 10 or 15 files at once if need be. So you can select one of these. Making this selection will give explicit read permission to this item to all of the members of the course. Right, so what you're doing is giving them a link, but you're also granting permission for them to see it. And then submit again. And now they have access to the file in your file space. Another new feature in Blackboard 9 is the notification system. Right? System-wide, it's not activated. But within any course, you can activate it. So this is the entry page for this course we're working in. And if you notice here, under To Do, you can edit notification settings. So I want to edit the general settings. These are, if you want, individual messages or a daily digest sent. And I want to edit this, the settings for this course. So this is the, the demo course that we're working in. And you'll have your list of courses here. So now you have a whole list of choices. Right? If you want announcements emailed, assignments available emailed, I'm not going to read this whole list. You can read this whole list. But any new thing, any new thing you put in the course can automatically generate an email. If you turn them all on, you're going to bombard your students. So my recommendation is to think about what, what deserves a notification. But the, and this is controlled per course. This is controlled by you per course. On a system level, we left them off. The notification system itself is on, but they're not automatically enabled in your course. This is a choice for you. And after you've made your choices, like everything else in Blackboard, click Submit. Now that we have a couple of content items on this page, I don't know if you can see so clearly in the recording, but when you're in your site, you'll see there's a double down arrow next to each one of these. If you click this double down arrow, this is where you would edit it, set adaptive release rules, attach metadata or statistics tracking. These were all choices you had before, but now they're all under, under this, this action arrow, this double down arrow. All right, so if I want to edit the test options, I could change the name or change the availability all, all through that double down arrow. One of the separate and very important basics is how to make your course available. And this is, the metaphor is the same. If we switch into the Blackboard course, it's just the buttons are different. So when you're in a Blackboard course, in any, in any place where you can get to this control panel in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a customization choice. And on the customization list is properties. Another click. When the properties come up, scroll down this page, make the course available. This one is already set to available, as you, but as you know, the default in Blackboard is to, is to not available to students. So just to hit those, those links again be, before we go away from here, under Customization, select Properties, scroll down, make course available, yes, and submit. The next section on building content are these cool new tools, mashups, where you can uh, put in YouTube and Flickr directly into your Blackboard site. 
and still in the content system. This is still where we're adding content. When you want to build content, this long list comes out, and you can add these mashups. Right? So if you have a video from YouTube that you want your students to see, you can search YouTube. This search field is now in YouTube. Right? More and more people are using videos from YouTube. And we can select one and submit. And this is now part of your course. Right? When the students come in and watch the video, this is now going to play from YouTube. Right? This is not taking up any space on the Blackboard server. This is linking to streaming from YouTube. And you can do essentially the same thing if you have Flickr photos or SlideShare presentations. SlideShares are kind of uh, web-based uh, PowerPoint presentations. The last section that we're going to touch on here is just housekeeping. And this is stuff that, that you are doing already in your regular Blackboard sites. Right? Exporting courses, archiving them, importing them back in, and, and copying forward. And if we switch into the Blackboard site, again down here in the, in the bottom left, under this control panel section, you have packages and utilities. And here we can do course copy, export archive, import. So let's just take a look at export archive. And this is a, a feature that is exactly the same as in the current Blackboard. The difference between the two, archive is a permanent record of the course. If you, if you run an archive, you don't change the existing course. It just makes a copy, a snapshot at that moment. It includes all the student work, all the grades, the complete grade book. The export is, this, is the same idea that it's a snapshot at that moment, but it's just your stuff. It's what you would carry forward to another course without the students and their work. When you create an export, an archive when you create it, there's only one, one setting. It's the, uh, the complete course. Uh, this is new to Blackboard 9. You can calculate the size. There's a limit on what you can import. The limit is two, 250, and if you uh, if you're worried that your course is, is too big, so this course is 22 megabytes. Right? If you're worried that you're going to go over the 250 megabyte limit, you can calculate the size before you do this. And then you can just pick what pieces you want to bring forward. In this case, we're going to select everything. Submit, and now this process takes a couple seconds. This, this package will appear on this page. You have to go away and come back. But Blackboard right now is, is creating a zip file of all of the contents of the course. And since this is a pretty small course, I don't think it's going to take long. If we just go back to the link, now we have a link to a file that we could download and then import into a new course. So all of those features are, in, are under this packages and utilities down in the in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, course copy. We had to copy a course forward into an existing course. This is all the same. Pick the pieces, pick the destination, pick all the pieces you want to bring, and click Submit. Any questions or comments, you can either email fcshelp at hofstra.edu or call Faculty Computing Support at 516-463-6894. I'm Paul Carson, and this is the Instructional Design Team from Hofstra University. Thank you.